May the 5th, 1941. A day well chosen. Five years ago, the Italian aggressor passed down the road into Addis Ababa, bringing murder and terror in his wake. And now this man, small of stature, but with the heart of a lion, once more gazes on his capital, Addis Ababa, the new flower. Weaved in hundreds of eucalyptus trees, calm and green, many hundreds of feet below. Through five dark years of exile, he's never faltered. His courage and demeanor and tribulation has been an inspiration to the whole world. outside, shouting and throwing flowers, kissing the ground, waving the Abyssinian flag. To them, the Emperor says, be Christian and kind-hearted to our defeated enemy, the Italian, and do not treat him as he treated you. So, in five years, the whirling gig of time, often slow in motion, has brought its full revenge. It was revenge, the word. The Italians are safe. No one molests them. All the world disregards them. Somehow or other, the Ethiopians pushed the horrible memory of the 9,000 massacred in February 1937 to the back of their minds. The whirligig of time has brought its justice rather than its revenge. The so-called barbarians, the cruel people of Italian legend, has taught the so-called civilized fascists to lessen in forbearance, decency, and dignity. At his palace, the emperor receives the patriot troops of Ras Ababa Arakan who boast before him in the customary cockwalk fukala of the Ethiopian fighting man. Each and all want to tell the emperor of his glorious deeds. How many Italian officers he killed. How many machine guns he took single-handed. How he is his emperor's devoted servant, to be sent to fight the battles of Ethiopia wherever his emperor desires. Then there is the quiet, serious voice of Ababa Aragai. Your Majesty, I never hoped to see the sun of your face again in Ethiopia. I never dreamed that I would once more be happy. I was only determined to fight until I died for our independence, for our flag, for our Christian religion, and for you, my king. England and Ethiopia have a common link in St. George. He is their patron saint as well as ours. Five years ago, as the black shirts marched into Addis Ababa, the priests of the Coptic Cathedral smuggled out of the town the Ark of the Covenant of St. George. It is a famous ark throughout Ethiopia. It is the ark of the national consciousness and of self-defense against aggression. It was with Menelik when he defeated the Italians at Adowa in 1896. It was with Ababa Aragai throughout the Italian occupation. On a cold morning in Addis Ababa, it came back to the cathedral with the emperor and was put once more with hymns and sacred dance in the Holy of Holies. It was a cold morning and it rained. But a right was restored on that day, and the chains were struck off the wrists of a whole people. It is good that you are here to record this picture of me in my palace garden at Addis Ababa. People who see this throughout the world we realize that even in the 20th century, with faith, courage, and a just cause, David will still beat Goliath. 